This is an Arduino Uno board and I bet you know that. But this, this is my Electron Ubino version 1.0. In this video I want to show you how I've made my own board as the Arduino Uno but with some unique add-ons that I wanted. My board has double row of pins, SPI port compatible with this kind of ANREF24 modules because I use those a lot, mini B USB port, white LEDs and some unique logos. So let's get started. This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the JLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back. If you've been on this channel for a while, I bet that you know what the Arduino microcontroller is. There are many versions of the Arduino using the Atmega 328 chip. There is the Arduino Uno, the Nano, the Pro Mini and other versions of boards that use the same chip. When I'm building a new project for tests, I almost always use the Arduino Uno because it is very simple. It has female pins for me to connect jump wires, it has an USB connector to program it, has external supply plug and voltages of 5 and 3.3 volts. In this video, I've made my own unique Arduino Uno and named it Electron Ubino and I'll show you how to make your own. You see, Arduino is an open hardware development board. All the components are free to buy and use. So I could gather all the components and make my own board and call it whatever I want. But before we start, I want to thank to the Arduino community for all they've done. Without Arduino, my channel would probably not even exist. It basically changed my life. So guys, why am I showing you this? Well, once you know how to make a basic Arduino schematic, you could build your own boards with the Atmega microcontroller, as I've made here on this drone board, the radio controller, this portable soldering iron and my CNC machine. Ok, so first let's decide what components we need. We must have the Atmega 328P microcontroller. We could have that in AU or PU format. I will use PU format with the socket since I might want to remove the chip sometime. Ok, the microcontroller can work by itself. It needs a bare minimum configuration in order to work. This is all that it needs to work. Here we can see the pins of the Atmega chip. First of all, we need a supply of 5 volts connected to the VCC pins. Also, the reset pin is negative enabled, so it needs 5 volts connected to it all the time. So a pull up resistor of 10K is added between the reset pin and 5 volts. The Atmega chip needs a clock input. Usually this controller works at 16 MHz, so 16 MHz crystal is added between pins 9 and 10. But this is not a resonator, so in order to oscillate it needs 2 extra capacitors of 22 picofarads. Make sure they are 22 picofarads, otherwise the signal won't be of 16 MHz. The main input of 5 volts must be with no voltage peaks. So a big capacitor is placed at the input and maybe some smaller decoupling capacitors around VCC pins. Ok, remember to connect ground and now the microcontroller should work. If it already has a bootloader burned to it, I connect an FTDI chip module like this one to the Atmega chip and upload a sketch with a blink code that makes pin 13 blink for half a second. You have a step by step tutorial below on how to get the bare minimum configuration of the Atmega 328 microcontroller, so check my webpage electronoops.com for more. Now that we know the bare minimum configuration, let's analyze the extra components of the Arduino Uno. First of all, as we have seen before, I had to use an external FTDA module to program the Atmega chip. My board will have that included. This IC makes the connection between the USB data and the Atmega328, so we could upload our sketches to the microcontroller. 
we also need a 5 volts voltage regulator, then a USB plug, a reset push button, female pins all around for the digital inputs and outputs, some extra capacitors, LEDs and a switch. This is the schematic for my board. You could download it from a link below. Now let me explain the options for these different components. For the wired communication between that mega chip and the USB, you could use the FT232RL chip, as I did for this board, but also the CH340 chip. Check the schematic for each configuration below. Then I've used this switch to change between external power supply or USB supply. The original Arduino board has some comparators and a MOSFET and this is done automatically. I've also put the original schematic in a link below if you want to see it. Ok, so for the voltage regulator you could use this one that I've used or maybe go directly with the well-known AMS1117 5V voltage regulator. This one is cheaper and basically works the same. I've made my board with two lines of pins since I use those a lot for my test with jump wires. Ok guys, so let's begin. I've used Easy EDA to create my schematic and layout. So go to Easy EDA and create a new project and give it a name. Now this will open a new schematic sheet. We can start adding components. But guys, before you start you should have a list with all the components that you need. Now you could go to libraries and start searching for the selected components. I first add the Atmega328 DIP version. I place the FT232 communication chip, the voltage regulator, the USB connector and the pin connectors. I have the inputs and output pins two times since I want two lines of pins. Now let's make the connections. You could use directly the wire but that will leave your schematic a mess. Instead use the net port label. Add this net port and give it a name. Now go to the other port and add the same label with the same name. Now those two points of the schematic are connected, but remember the label name has to be the same. I've placed all the extra components such as resistors, capacitors and a fuse here to the USB power input. In my case all the SMD capacitors, resistors and LEDs are 0805 size, so they are not that difficult to be soldered later. Ok, this is my final schematic. Always check the price of each component before you start creating the layout, because there could always be a cheaper component that you could use. Once the schematic is done and you are sure that there are no errors, click this and select convert to PCB. So here is our board and all the components. And here is what I've done. Now go to libraries and search for the Arduino Uno. Somebody already made the shape of the Arduino Uno board. Place that on your layout and start giving your board the same shape. The PCP board outline is marked with this pink line. Once the shape is the same as the Arduino Uno board, place 4 vias of 3.5mm diameter and a hole of 3mm in the same place as the Arduino board. Then place the female pins in the same position and once that is done you could delete the Arduino board. Now I can place my components in the position that I want. The USB connector here the FTDI chip between the USB and the Atmega328, the voltage regulator with some capacitors here, the fuse, the power switch, the reset button, the LEDs and here the SPA port just in case I want to add this kind of SPA radio module to it. Ok, it's time to route all the tracks. I really prefer do this manually, but you could also use the auto route option. Also make the power lines a bit thicker. My power lines are of 0.6mm and the signals of 0.25. Make sure you don't have many squared angles for the signal tracks and that the decoupling capacitors are close enough to the chip. So this is my layout. Finally I add a copper area for both layers and save the file. Now go here and select generate Gerbers. On this window you could directly order your PCB or download the Gerbers. I select order at JLC PCB. A new page will open and here we can see our board. Click view Gerber and inspect it one more time. Then select your settings. 
I've selected red color, 10 boards and 2 layers. For red color the price is of 9 euros, but for green you could pay the amazing price of only 1.62 euros. Ok, save to cart. For Spain, as you can see I've paid only 6 more dollars for shipping. Time is not a problem for me, so I never use DHL, because it is very expensive. Pay the boards and wait for the order to arrive. Using DHL you would receive the boards to Spain in around 5 days, which is amazing, but with normal shipping in 2 weeks, which is not that bad. For new customers GLC PCB has free shipping during this time of the year. So ordering the green color, 10 PCBs of 10 by 10 cm and 2 layers, you will only pay $2. Ok, I received my boards. Now with the schematic on the side I start soldering the components. The board has great seal clear, so I can see the name of each component. Just for example here is the C2 capacitor, I go to the schematic and see its value. I get that value and solder it to my PCB. Do that for each component. Now everything is soldered in place. It's time to add the Atmega chip. Be careful and not put it backwards. Check pin 1 marked with this dot here on the corner. We have the same dot on the silk layer on the board. Now if the chip doesn't have a bootloader burn to it, you should burn it first. Here is what you need to burn the bootloader to the Atmega chip. You will need another Arduino Uno, some jump cables and a USB cable. Connect the Arduino Uno to your PC and open Arduino IDE. Select Arduino board and go to examples, Arduino ISP and open this example. Now upload this file to the Arduino Uno. Now go to tools one more time and change the programmer to Arduino as ISP. Now make these SPI connections between the stock Arduino and your board. Once the connections are made, go once again to tools and select burn bootloader. The LEDs will start blinking very fast. Once you get the message bootloader burn complete, you are good to go. Now connect the USB to your board. Change back the programmer mode and upload the test sketch. And there you go, I've made the LED blink with my Electron Ubino board. Pretty cool right? This board works exactly as the Arduino Uno, but is made just how I want it. More female pins, SPA pads here and the great color. You can find all the extra information, schematics, gerbers and more photos in the description below and on my webpage electronoops.com. So there you have it guys, this is my Electron Ubino board, please tell me what you think about it, if you will build one yourself or if you like my design. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. And if you are new to this channel, click the subscribe button. Thanks again and see you later guys.